Lesson 35, voltage dividers. We will learn how, how voltage dividers work. Okay, pretty simple to, pretty simple um, lesson today. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, we've just come from learning about short circuits. We've come from learning about, we've come from learning about parallel circuits and series circuits. And then we've also come from these big long lessons where we were breaking down different circuits. So now that we've got this practice behind us, it makes sense to talk about the last thing, which was um, voltage dividers. Now we're gonna talk about what a voltage divider is and how it works. Let's start off with this picture here of a voltage divider. Voltage dividers are ways uh, are ways of setting up circuits to ensure only a set amount of voltage is transferred. This is important when using sensitive electrical devices. This here is an example of a voltage divider. So let's have a look at what this circuit has in it. We've got two, we've got a series circuit essentially. We've got a 12 volt, um, we have a 12 volt resistor here. We've got a 12 volt um, battery, and then we've got a two, a two kilo ohm resistor and a four kilo ohm resistor up here. Now what's different about this battery uh, and this circuit in general is that there happens to be a set of lines here and these lines go up and this is like a part of a circuit. But the part of this circuit that's a bit interesting is that these lines that go up, they don't connect to anything. They actually go, and what we would say for this is that they actually go outside of the circuit. Sometimes we represent this by doing little circles at the end here, say that they are connected, but they just go outside of the circuit. And we can see that if you go outside of the circuit, that it seems to measure eight volts. Well, how does it measure eight volts? Is that actually the amount of current that gets transferred? Is that amount of voltage that gets transferred? We can actually work that out quite quickly. We can say this. Well, we know that the RT, the total voltage, that's going to be 6,000 ohms. I just went this plus this. Therefore, the total current, the total current, that's going to be um, B divided by R is going to be 12 divided by 6,000 is going to be. 12 divided by 6,000 is going to be 2 milliamps or 0 0.002. Now, if I now want to look at like, for example, let's look at the voltage drop over this resistor. The voltage drop over this resistor is 2 milliamps times 4,000 ohms. If I do that, I will get eight volts. So eight volts is getting dropped over this resistor. I can easily go, well, therefore four volts must be getting dropped here, which means that I can either drop eight volts here, or I can, because remember this is one loop, or over this loop, I can drop eight volts over this section here. What I've done is because I've got this resistor here and this resistor here, I've made sure that the voltage difference between these two wires is eight volts. And that could be useful. If I'm trying to run a um, particular globe at eight volts, because if I run it at 12 volts, it'll, it'll like be too bright or it'll break. And this is a really useful device. If I'm trying to make sure that I'm sending a specific voltage, I'm trying to go from 240 volts down to specific voltage, having a voltage divider would be really useful. And we use these a lot. And ultimately, every time you have two resistors set up like this, it is a voltage divider. Obviously, um, there are some intricacies about what is on the other side of these wires. When I first was teaching this, I was a bit, always a bit confused because I was like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I was like, don't you need to know what's up the top here? And technically you do. Because if the resistance is higher than you, then if the resistance was higher than four kilo ohms, then you might end up dropping a greater voltage. And 
Oh, pardon me. It's also going to make a. It's also going to be a bit weird as well because, of course, you're creating, I guess, a parallel circuit sort of section of the um, of the of the circuit. But essentially, you just assume that the voltage coming out is whatever the voltage drop over it is. That's just how voltage dividers are calculated. Let's look at another an example. Let's look at this guy here. So we can calculate the um. We can do the same thing we just did. Calculate the voltage out. Step one, let's calculate the total resistance. Let's do this, let's just do this together. You know what? I might unmute everyone. Can someone tell me really quickly, once I unmute people, what is the total, um, what's the total resistance? I might have to get. Uh, or you can type in chat. What's the total resistance of the circuit? Four point two kiloamps. Thank you. You're right. It is four point two kiloamps. RT equals four point two kiloamps. Okay. Beautiful. What's the current? What's RT? What is the current, someone? Out loud or in chat, up to you. 2.86 amps, no, not quite properly. What is the current? All right, who's on? Let's have a look. Who can I pick on? Who can I pick up? Um, all right. Well, Morrison has audio. Morrison, what's the in, what's the total current? Oh, looks like um, quickly see that he did miss this time since the negative three. That's what I wanted. So I can write that down as just 2.86 times, 2.86 milliamps. Guys, I want you guys to participate because if you don't understand something, if you're not participating in trying to get these questions out, then I don't know what you do and don't know. It's hard enough trying to talk to a screen instead of actually looking at your faces and what you write stuff down it's even harder when i'm like oh i don't know if you guys are actually you guys aren't replying to me so i'm just talking to a you know a powerpoint presentation at the moment you got to communicate with me once we know the total current we can jump in and we can go v equals ir we can go for zero point zero point zero Zero two eight six times four two zero zero. That's going to give us uh, not times four two zero zero. Sorry, times one two zero zero. Because we want to know if this resistor. I was like, what's going on here? That gives us three point four three volts. So V out is you're losing 3.43 volts. It's a bit of a random number, but that's okay, it's, it's fine. That's how voltage dividers work. Now, at this point, I wanna quickly say this. Because we're using the same steps, we're using a very, very simple process, right? We're always calculating the total current. Uh, we're always uh, calculating the total resistance, calculate the total current, and then use that to find the resistor to find V out. Then there happens to be a formula that does these steps all in one go. 
Now, I didn't want to start off with a formula. I always never, I never start off with a formula because I really think that it's important for you guys to see you guys can do this stuff without a formula. The amount of times that I've completely forgotten the formula in the test and then just had to, you know, wing it, you know, it's so therefore it's really important that you guys know, hey, I can just wing this if I need to. But there is a formula. The formula is this. The formula says that V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in. What you're doing is you're saying, well, the voltage out is the same as the is the same as the voltage in, and then you're finding, well, what's the resistance R2 divided by R1 plus R2? Now you, this might look like a really random formula, but if you think about it, it sort of is based off the stuff that we've already done. Okay. How it's sort of based on stuff we've already done is this. V in is the same as saying Vt. And R1 plus R2 is the same as saying Rt. So when you take V in and you divide it by R1 plus R2, you're essentially saying V divided by R, which is the same as the current. So you take this part here, finds the current. And once you know what the current is, you take the, um, the resistance times the current, well then that will give you the voltage out. So that's where this formula comes from. It does come from the same things that we've been doing before. Find, find the total resistance, find the current, and then find the voltage drop over the first one. So there's three steps. But we can now compress that into a nice, nifty, handy dandy formula. And of course, by the way, if there's like, you know, if there's another resistor here, then you would just add R3 or whatever down the bottom here, you know? It doesn't actually matter, or R0 is supposed to be at the front. It doesn't really matter how many resistors there are, it's just the same process. Um, let's go look, let's use this formula in, let's use this formula. So let's look at, um, yeah, we'll look at one standard example, then we'll look at one random example. So let's look at this formula. Calculate the voltage out. We're going to use the formula. So how do we use the formula? V out. V out equals uh, R2 divided by R1 plus R2 all times the VN. Well, R2 is 4,000 divided by R1, which is 5,000 plus 4,000. And that's all multiplied by Vn, which is 24. So I put this in my calculator and I put these in brackets because, you know, classic, I, you know, you've got to make sure that you divide everything, not just <coughs> 4,000 divided by 5,000, 4,000 divided by 9,000, because 5,000 plus 4,000 is 24. It's 4.74 volts. That's what V out is. It's an easy, quick and easy way to work it out using one equation. Again, you could just work it out bit by bit like we were doing before, but this is just a handy dandy little formula that you might want to write down on a cheat sheet or in your book or something before you go into a, uh, a test. So 4.74 volts. So it's definitely a formula that I think is worth writing down, having in your book. If you're writing this down in your book, maybe I would suggest highlighting it along with your V equals IR and P equals VI. It's just a quick little formula that makes life easy. Now what happens, can you rearrange this formula? By God, you can rearrange this formula. Look at this. So we start off by writing down V out equals um equals r1 or r2 over r1 plus r2 times v in that's what we would normally do but now here's the kicker we don't want to know what r out is we actually know what r out is already you know it's two volts we want to work out what v in is now again 
we could do this the old fashioned way. We now know there are two volts dropped over this fault uh, resistor. You could use that to calculate the current and then backtrack and blah, blah, blah. But let's see if we can just use that formula. So let's go V out times R1 plus R2 equals R2 times V in. How I've gone from this step to this step is I've multiplied both steps sides by R1 plus R2. Now that I've got that out of the way, I can very easily just go V out times R1 plus R2 and then divide this all by R2. And that's going to give me V in. Or I've done to go from this step to this step is so divided by R2. Now I can solve it. Beautiful. V out is 2. R1 plus R2 is 3 plus 1.2 is 4,200. R2 was 1,200. And if I put that in my calculator, and I should get an answer that's more than two, because remember, it has the V in must be greater than the V out. Seven. Seven volts. Okay. That seems to make sense. Uh, let me just, yeah. I'm just going to double check that because that's, but I'm pretty sure that's the cat answer. Seven, yep, seven volts, yep, that's it. So that is a, that's the um, that's what a voltage divider is. A voltage divider, a Romani, is just a way that we can split, take a large voltage like seven volts, and split that down into a smaller voltage like two volts. And we would use that a lot when we're trying to make sure that if you're trying to make a circuit and you're trying to make sure that only certain voltages go to certain parts of the circuit, that's why you would use something like this. It's a really good way to just make sure that you're not overloading particular parts. Now, the last little bit that I wanted to talk to you about is, well, um, I guess I wanted to talk to you briefly about, um, I'm going to start Tomorrow we're going to spend a lot more time going through all these uh, different types of um, non-ohmic devices. But I thought I'm going to start with, I guess, probably the most ohmic of the non-ohmic devices. Um, well, it's technically not a non-ohmic device. It's a variable resistor. Now, a variable resistor or a potentiometer or pot is, is, another, is another name for it. Looks like this. Now you can get smaller versions, like little tiny little blue things, but ultimately they are usually a, what's common about them is they have three what, three prongs. Count them, one, two, three. And the other part that's common about them is they usually have some kind of knobs twisting. Now what a variable resistor is, is it can be used as, um, it can be used so that a person can change the resistance of the circuit and control it, um, something like sand or light bars. Because essentially what a variable resistor is, is it's a voltage divider. The symbol for it looks like this. So you've got a resistor with another line coming in from the top. If you look at that, that's very similar to this junction right here. And that's because that's exactly what we're looking at. That's exactly what a variable resistor is. If you were to break down what a variable resistor had in it, and I've seen this picture a couple of times, sometimes people draw variable resistors like this. Let me see if I can just show you. So here we've got a resistor, yeah? Now, as the electrons go from one side of the resistor to the other side of the resistor, they drop more and more voltage. Okay? If I was to say, you know, here it had 10 volts, and then here it has maybe like 2 volts because there's another resistor later on in the circuit, then therefore you would say, well, it's probably going to have 9 volts here, 8 volts here, 7 volts here, 6 volts here. 
Now, what a variable resistor does is it says, well, what if I was to maybe stick a wire off here? You know, then in, I could manage to take off this two volts. Then if I move that variable resistor, say down here, then I could take off um, three volts. Well, this would be one volt, so I could take off one volt. If I was to move that variable resistor further down, I could take off three volts. But ultimately the main idea, and it works like, again, this idea of a, um, sorry, it works like the idea of a voltage divider. Your three volts is getting dropped over this section of the resistor. So therefore, if I take a, a line out, then I can take off, um, if I take a line out, then I can take off three volts. And that's how voltage, that's how potentiometers work. They essentially have three lines. And of these three, of these three bars, one is going to be connected to the positive side of your circuit. One is going to be connected to the negative side of your circuit. The middle one, that's going to be your new line. And that will have a greater or lesser voltage drop over it, depending on where you change the knob. Why we love these is because these are great for something like, um, <clears throat> these could be good for something like analog circuits uh, and they could be good for something like um, input devices. So for example, let me just draw a quick picture of what we, we could do with it. Let's just say we've got a, um, let's do this, right? So we'll take a, um, we'll take a 12 volt battery. What we'll do is we'll attach the 12 volt battery to a um, we'll attach the 12 volt battery to a variable resistor. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll then say um, put this. a circuit like this so there we go cool now let's say and this is to say a light bulb yeah okay cool All right well, what's going to happen here well um as the variable resistor increases in its voltage drop it's going to change the amount of um, it's going to change the amount of voltage that's dropped over the as you change this value and you make it larger then there's going to be more voltage going to get dropped here compared to getting dropped on the light bulb. So therefore, you know, let's say that it was, let's just say this is a one ohm light bulb and this is a one ohm resistor down here. Well, then that would mean that, well, let's just say this is currently one ohm. And that would mean that one ohm, you know, one ohm, then that's going to be dropping if we assume that it shares it, then one ohm, one ohm, and this is going to drop off six volts. Because remember, they're both in the same ring. But if I increase that to two ohms, then suddenly that's going to change the whole thing. Now this is going to drop twice as much as this one. So therefore, this would be dropped down to four volts. And this would jump up to eight volts. And if I change this again to three volts, three ohms, But changes again to three ohms here. Well, what that's going to mean is that then suddenly, well, this is going to drop three times as much as this one. So therefore, this is going to have to drop three volts, and this is going to be dropping nine volts. Now, I'm I'm doing these calculations just based on ratios in my head. Normally, what you would probably do if you were given a question which had a variable resistor is you would then go about doing this process a little bit more properly you would probably use this to calculate the total resistance in this wire. So three plus one equals four ohms. You would then use that to find out what the total current through that wire is. We know the 12 volts divided by four is gonna be three amps. And then you could use that information to work out, well, one ohm times three amps is gonna give you three volts. So you would do it a bit more properly. I'm just trying to show you guys that 
as the voltage, as the resistance on this increases, the voltage is able to drop over, over the light bulb goes less and less and less. Why would you do this? Well, if you wanted to have a dimmer switch on a light bulb, you would quickly change up the resistance so that light would get less and less voltage, so it would become less and less bright. And then that would mean you could change the, you know, you could change the brightness of a particular globe. Um, last little thing I wanted to talk about. This isn't actually related to topic at hand. Um, are there any questions about this stuff before I move on? Oh, someone has a question. Nope. Okay, Leon's good. Okay, but just a heads up. Uh, you don't necessarily need to know all of this bit here. You don't necessarily need to know all. You don't need. You sort of need to know some of this bit here. But I haven't done a great job of explaining it. So hopefully, when you we get up to some actual questions in the textbook, we can actually work on this a little bit better. But this is still the, at least the basics of how you need to work on these kinds of problems. Um, and that's all I wanted to do with this, is give you guys an idea. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was non omit devices. Again, as I said, we're going to be talking about tomorrow, spend the whole lesson talking about non omit devices and circuits. We're going to talk about thermistors. We're going to talk about light-dependent resistors. We're going to talk about LEDs. It's going to be the whole lesson. But just quickly, non omit devices, we've already talked about these guys. Back in lesson 28, if you want to go back to look at how we did it. But what we said is they don't follow Ohm's law. Um, and because they don't follow Ohm's law, we say that, you know, they just, they're not linear when they follow Ohm's law. And so if I look at this circuit over here, V equals IR, I can see that it makes a straight line. Uh, one of these resistors, one of these devices makes a straight line. This one is an ohmic. That's an ohmic device, whereas this guy over here, he's non ohmic. I can tell he's non ohmic because he's not following a straight line. Now, just because they don't follow a straight line, just because they're not ohmic devices, doesn't mean they don't follow Kirchhoff's laws. They can be put in series and parallel circuits. We can make some calculations. And also, you can still use V equals IR to calculate the resistance. You just got to remember that that resistance won't be the same resistance always. That will change. Let's go have a look at this quick circuit, and then I'm going to be done here. The following figures show two electrical devices, A and B, connected in a simple circuit and the current voltage graph to show for A and B is on the right. So here are the, here's the uh, voltage graph. So what does it say about this circuit? It says here, when the current is 80 milliamps, calculate. So let's go have a look at this. When the current is 80 milliamps, 80 milliamps is here. And when it's 80 milliamps, we have two dots here. One says that when it's 80 milliamps, the voltage A has six volts getting dropped across it. But when it's 80 milliamps, the first one looks like it's only got about, let's call that, no, about zero point, let's call that, so one is about there, so I'm gonna call that 0 0.8 volts. You guys might disagree. You might say, you guys might be looking at this graph and saying, oh, I don't think that's 0 0.8. I think that looks like more like 0 0.5. And if you want to put 0 0.5 in there, you might still get a pretty close answer. I think it's closer to halfway than it is than a quarter, but it's up to you. So, and of course, because it's a question like this, if you did get a question like this on the test, don't think that I'm going to be like, oh, clearly you couldn't tell it was 0 0.8, not 0 0.5. It's just, I'm going to have to have a range of values that I accept. Now, I now know what voltage is getting dropped over both of those resistors. So there's the first part done. What is the voltage across B? Done. 0 0.8 volts. Perfect. Easy. What is the current through B? Well, I can quite uh, easily do that as well. 
the current through B is what we just um, hold on a sec. Ooh, hold on, hold on. I don't think anyone stopped me while I was making mistakes here. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Greer. Okay. Yep, I made some mistakes here. If we know six volts is getting dropped across A, right? This is still a parallel circuit. That means we know that over B, six volts need to get dropped over it. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Oh man, not a great teacher. Having a bad moment here at the moment, guys. So if we know that six volts is getting dropped across here, we can rub out all of this guesswork here. We can go straight to the answer. Six volts means that we can quickly calculate. Well, that looks close to maybe five. I'm going to say five. I'm going to say five milliamps. That's what I made the mistake with. So I was assuming that, oh, the current, and I made the same mistake that I told you not to make in the attendance question. Oh my God, everything comes full circle. I assume that the current through A was the same as the current through B. That was the problem. That's not the case in a parallel circuit. But with a parallel circuit, the voltage through A must be the same as the voltage through B. So I can very easily find the voltage through B. And then, not using Ohm's law, but by using the graph provided, I was able to find out that the current was 5 milliamps. Now, you might disagree. You might think that this line is actually closer to 4 milliamps or maybe 8 milliamps. It's up to you, but I think it's about 5 milliamps. We can actually use this as well to figure out the total current is going to be 85 milliamps. And you could then find out the total resistance of the circuit as well, if you wanted to. Uh, but remember, the total resistance of the circuit will only be at that particular point, because if you change the voltage, you completely you will completely change everything. But that's how you might do something with a non-ohmic device. Ladies and gents, that's all the time that we've got, plus the you know, butting up against the end of the period anyway. What I'm going to get you guys to do, if you've got some time, uh, if you got some time today for homework, is going to make this is going to be homework, is to finish up 4.3 question 10. The question 10 was the one about voltage dividers, and then 4.4 is pretty much what we just talked about just then. It's only a very short exercise, but I'm not going to make this one due. I'm going to make this one due tomorrow because I would love you guys to do this tonight just so that you can sort of compound this one. This one I'm going to make due later. So don't worry about it. I'll put that on campus. I'll put that on the classroom later. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the lesson. 